The second leading cause of death in the U.S. is cancer, and recently scientists at Scripps Research here in San Diego County have found new ways to treat the illness. Oh, and those medical breakthroughs so important. It's done by boosting what is called checkpoint inhibitor therapies with a certain drug. And joining us now to talk more about it and explain it is postdoctoral fellow from Scripps Research is Dr. Yaroslav Zak, also known as Jerry Zak, and we appreciate you Americanizing your name as well for us. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Well, take us to medical school. Let's start with what um, I introduced as the checkpoint inhibitor therapies. How are they used to attack cancer cells? So checkpoint inhibitors are really what made immunotherapy such a major form of uh, therapy. And they primarily target cytotoxic T cells, which are a form of cell that very specifically looks for the cancer cells and destroys them. And it essentially releases a break that holds these T cells back. So in a, in a typical cancer, these cells would be dysfunctional and unable to do their job. But with the checkpoint inhibitor, one of the reasons why they are held back is, is uh, released and they can go ahead and, and have cytotoxic activity, which means they kill the tumor. Um, but what we have found is a way to make these drugs work in patients in which it would otherwise not work. Help us understand why that is. So the idea of immunotherapy is that your body basically fights the cancer like it's any other thing that comes into your body that it needs to fight off. Is that correct? The kind that's of the general that, idea? That's pretty accurate. I mean, if you get a viral infection and uh, the, the virus replicates inside the cell, mm -hmm. there will be a special mark on the surface of those cells that have the virus in them. And the T cells will be able to very specifically find those infected cells and destroy them. And cancers are also abnormal. So the cancer cells display similar marks. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the exact molecule is a little bit different, but it's the same idea. And then the T cells can go in and destroy the tumor. And this actually happens in our bodies naturally a lot of the time, even before you, you notice any, any kind of disease. The body's it's, always fighting cancer in some way, shape, it, or form. It's one of the reasons why we don't get more cancer than, than we do. Well, and we all know that chemotherapy and some of the other treatments can really ravage the body. So immunotherapy has been attractive to a lot of patients. Tell us, though, um, before this new breakthrough, that the percentage of people, cancer patients, that this could help was very small. What, like 20%? And now, with these clinical findings, you're finding that you can really expand it further and more people can be helped by this, correct? That's correct. So unfortunately, as powerful as the checkpoint inhibitors are, it is only a relatively small percentage of the total number of people who receive this therapy that respond to it. And so there's a lot of people hard at work making it work for, for more patients. In this case, we have started out with a rather specific group of patients. So this is Hodgkin lymphoma, not a, a particularly common cancer type. But what makes us really excited about the results um, and what makes us hope that this will help more people than just patients with Hodgkin lymphoma is that the way this therapy works targets a fairly uh, common mechanism of resistance which is mediated by actually the immune system kind of turning against itself a little mm -hmm. bit so what happens in cancer is the immune system doesn't work in concert um, you know in, in pursuit of, of tumor destruction it often um, does bad things like um, inhibit the function of some of these cytotoxic T cells. Mm -hmm. And with this therapy, we can effectively um, suppress some of the bad guys without actually hurting the good guys. That's, that seems like the, the ideal thing. We gotta run here just a second, but I wanna ask you two things quickly. Uh, one, how was it discovered? Because I think that was kind of an interesting uh, part of the story. And, and two, when might something like this potentially be available for you know, the masses to use? So the discovery it was a really a stepwise process and a collaborative process. Um, we had to work with um, a clinician um, at the University of Minnesota, Dr. Bachanova, mm -hmm. and we discovered in the lab that there could be some activity in experimental systems, but she really took the lead on the clinical side. Um, as to when it might be available, well, there's a phase two trial currently enrolling patients in, with Hodgkin lymphoma. So patients with Hodgkin lymphoma might be eligible um, for, for treatment relatively soon, depending on the results of yeah, uh, these follow-up trials. In other cancer types, hopefully not too far behind, because there's a story in the same issue of um, science back-to-back -back with ours, where uh, another group showed that this could work in lung cancer. Mm. Um, Which is so difficult to battle.
it's difficult to battle and it's also a fairly common type of cancer. Yeah. So, so the hope is that we can, you know, through additional studies, we can continue adding more patients on the list. Well, we are so grateful that you're in our backyard, this brain trust coming up with these medical breakthroughs and, and giving some real hope to people and to ask questions about checkpoint inhibitor therapies with your physician if, if you're facing such an illness. Yes, indeed. Dr. Jerry Zach, thank you so much for coming in, explaining to us, and uh, good work. Keep it up. Thank you for having work. me. Okay, thank you thank so much. You. Well, still